last time we were together, it was a big reveal. His memory, not surprisingly, ain't great. And he says that. He says, I, my mind has never really worked the same since. I, I can't remember things. Um, but that doesn't really matter because I got big feelings. And feelings are what actually count. Memory. <laughs> I don't need no stinking memory. I got the feelings. So that was part one. And we went easy on him. And you know, I'm not going hard on somebody who just lost his mom. But my hard heart is back out again, folks. Because this section got weird real quick. I'm talking what did he just say? That's crazy. And it's just like, y'all gotta get somebody up in this place who can help you figure out that that's not what you need to say. Don't reveal some of this stuff. Like, you don't have to say everything. The problem is, I guess, because since so many of his memories are things he read about himself, and he's just trying to bring to the table whatever he does remember. And let me tell you, some of the memories knocking around in this guy's head are off-putting, to say the least. I feel sorry, if this is the stuff that he could remember, oh my goodness, what? So let's get into the next section, which, you know, it's along the same theme. I don't know, I don't remember. I can't remember anything. Let me tell you what I remember. Uh, I remember the matrons at school. So he, he's talking about who's taking care of them. I mean, there's no parents around, so somebody's gotta watch these kids. And though the, the, the joint headmasters didn't have much to do with them, but the matrons had something to do with them, and he certainly wanted to have something to do with them. He says that, uh, he says, we called them matrons. Whatever tenderness we got day to day came from them. The matrons hugged us, kissed us, bandaged our injuries, and wiped our tears. They fancied themselves our surrogates. Mums away from mums, they'd always chirp, which had always been odd, but now was especially confusing because of mums' disappearance, and also because the matrons were suddenly hot. I mean, you know, on the one hand, it's like, okay, well, you know, don't make too much of that. Never, who hasn't had a little crush on a school teacher? You know what I'm saying? It's like, don't make a big thing of it. But then when he, like, if he had just said that, I'd be like, oh, okay, okay. But then he goes on to talk about bath time with the matrons. Three times a week after dinner, the matrons would assist the youngest boys with a nightly wash. The matrons came down the row of tubs with stiff brushes and bars of floral soap. Every boy had his own towel embossed with his school number. After shampooing a boy, the matrons would ease back his head and give them a slow and luxurious rinse. Confusing as hell. Uh, is he describing the scenario or how I should feel right now? Because I'm confused as hell. What? I, I, all I can say to you about this right now, I, I, I should also note that he goes on to say, or maybe he already said, but I mean, this wasn't going on into puberty. So, I mean, it, it presumably these were the young children that they were taking care of. You know, I mean, these, I think that kids go to boarding school and they're almost like seven or something so that child probably needs a wee bit of assistance but even if you had some lingering thoughts um during these special moments with the matrons who were your moms at school i like don't tell us that like maybe take that one to the grave i wish he had well, so while well, everybody's over there, you know, rolling around in the suds with the hot matrons, he unfortunately had Pat. Now, Pat is the one that he always gets uh, to deal with, and he is, he doesn't mince words on how unsightly she was, and how annoying she was, and how uh, just, like, what a buffoon Pat was, you know, what a loser, you know, what with her hunchback and her bad knees. And it's like, <laughs> dude, like ease up on the poor lady. And he, he says, you know, well, you know, if you had a wound, don't go to Pat because she'd just make it worse. She'd poke her finger in it, you know, because she, I don't mean, I don't think she was a sadist or anything, but she was definitely empathy challenged. And it's like, isn't that the pot calling the kettle black, but. Anyway, so he goes on and on about gross Pat. The matron I dealt with the most was Pat. Unlike the other matrons, Pat wasn't hot. Pat was cold. Pat was small, mousy, frazzled, and her hair fell greasily into her always tired eyes. Pat didn't seem to get much joy out of life, though she did find two things reliably satisfying. 
catching a boy somewhere he wasn't supposed to be and shutting down any bouts of roughhousing. Then he goes on to say, um, Pat had many crosses to bear. The biggest seemed to be her knees and spine. The latter was crooked, the former chronically stiff. Walking was hard. Stairs were torture. She'd descend backwards, glacially. Often we'd stand on the landing below her, doing antic dances and making faces. Do I need to say which boy did this with most the enthusiasm? Well, it seems like you might spare yourself and not out yourself as this absolute monster, but he goes on proudly. And then he says, um, she was a tortoise, so we were never worried about Pat catching us. Still, now and then the tortoise would luck out. She'd lunge, grab a fistful of boy. Aha! Didn't stop us. We went on mocking her as she came down the stairs. The reward was worth the risk. He tries to soften the blow by saying, oh, I wasn't really making fun of Pat. I was just trying to make my buddies laugh. So, <laughs> you know. And sometimes I could even make her laugh. So, score!